has nice little editing software. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to um, open this uh, piece of centered clay and make it into a pot. So this is uh, making uh, your embryonic pot. I start out by using the side of my hand. See how I have kind of a little swoopy area in the side of my hand? So I actually lay that right on the mound of clay and uh, let the clay go around and so uh, it makes a kind of a, a bowl shape in there which gives me a bullseye to aim at when I'm opening my clay. And I forgot to mention that this clay now, now I've allowed it to get into the position where I'm going to make a pot. So it could be any size depending on how much clay I had, but it's generally going to be pretty low to the wheelhead when I'm ready to start the pot. Uh, one of the reasons being that if I have it, you know, if it was tall, it's going to be harder for me to do the motions that I need to do to get it started. So I bring it down pretty low. Okay. So I, I had my hand there, I made that dip, and now I'm going to use my left thumb to open into the clay. So right now I'm just establishing the depth of the pot and what the thickness of the floor will be. So I'm going to um, put that thumb right in that bullseye and I'm going to push down on that thumb with my other hand. And the reason I do it this way is again to take the pressure off of my thumbs. There is pressure on my thumbs but not on the, not on the joint up here. It's on, more on the knuckle. So once I have opened in, and the two of you may want to come around here so that you can actually look uh, inside for the next couple of steps at what I'm doing. So I've opened in, so it leaves a cone shape in there, right? And now I'm going to uh, use my pin tool and I actually can push it right through the bottom of the pot and uh, let it stand there. And then, it's, so it's, it's gone through the bottom of the pot and to the wheel head. And now I'm gonna um, run my finger down that needle tool and pick it up. And now I have my measurement for the thickness of the floor. And um, for a uh, pot for you when you're just starting, you wanna have plenty of meat there to uh, trim so that you don't easily go through the bottom of your pot. So I'm saying half an inch to uh, five-eighths of an inch is, is fine. And actually anywhere from three-eighths to five-eighths. No, yeah. Okay. So um, it's, uh, this one is just about a half an inch. So you can see that there. All right, so the little hole that I made in the bottom of the pot doesn't really make any difference because I'm gonna be doing a lot to the bottom of the pot from here on out. Um, and so that will be soon gone. The next step in this process is doing what we call opening out. So we've established the floor, but we just have this little tiny round area that is open right now. And so I'm going to get my thumb right back in the position where I left off. And I'm going to get the wheel going, and I'm going to actually now push my uh, hand, my thumb, toward 3 o'clock. Is that 3 o'clock? No, that's 9 o'clock on the wheel head, on the uh, clock face. So it's going directly that way. Now the first form that we start with making is a cylinder, and that is a shape like this bucket that has a flat floor and it has uh, straight sides. And sometimes more and sometimes less, but it's supposed to have kind of a 90 degree angle, a corner down here that we uh, would be uh, calling where we would be starting to work from when we're pulling the pot up. So. Here you can see that when I used my thumb, I went straight across the bottom of the floor. And that's different from what we do when we throw bowls, which you'll see later. So now I have my pot, it's, it's opened in and opened out. And now what I need to do is some housekeeping on the floor of my pot. This is the only time in the whole process of making the pot that I'm going to get a chance to actually touch that part of the pot because from now on I'm going to be making the walls taller and it's, it's going to be um, uh, harder to get down there. So I'm going to take these three fingers of my right hand and you may find that there is some other finger arrangement that works better for you. It has to do with hand size and flexibility and all. But I use my, th my index, middle finger and ring finger with my middle finger doing most of the work.
and if you can see, I actually, I've gotten these fingers so they actually will kind of bend, uh, not quite double jointed, but you know, they bend more than they used to. So I'm going to get right in the very center of the floor of the pot. And in my mind, I'm aiming for this bucket that's straight across from me, okay? And that I have something to aim for, it will make sure that I go that way rather than wobbling that way. So I'm going to get my fingers in there, and I'm pressing down with enough pressure to change the texture of the floor, but not enough to gouge the floor. And I'm going to start from the middle, and I'm going to move to the outside edge, so the forward edge of the pot. And I'm going to then slide back again to the center. And I'm going to go back and forth, uh, one time out and back, about 10 times. Again, I call that an excursion. So 10 excursions, back and forth. And so what I'm doing here is actually called compressing the floor of the pot. And really, when we make a pot, we compress all the different sides of the pot. We compress the bottom now. We compress the walls as we are making the pot. We compress the rim frequently as we're making the pot so that we have put pressure all over the pot. And if I didn't put pressure on the floor of the pot and, and bring those particles together that are down there and get them really nicely tight and compressed, then when the pot goes to dry, it will tend to crack kind of like the mud on a dirt road will crack when it dries. And so you don't want that to happen in your pot. And so this is the way to keep it from happening. Uh, if it's compressed, it will hold together better, you know, more likely than breaking. So if you look at this right now, I actually have what I would call an embryonic pot, right? It has a floor, it has walls, and it has a rim. And sometimes uh, pot pots that people make early on don't go much beyond that, uh, you know. But uh, I'm going to show you the next step, and I'm also going to show you a couple of housekeeping items uh, with a pot. I call them housekeeping, so that every time that you have done anything to this pot, now that it has walls and a floor, you need to make sure that if there's any moisture at all in the bottom of the pot, that you go in and that you uh, clean the water off. And notice that I do that not with my sponge moving, but with my wheel, with my pot moving. And it will sop up if I have a puddle in there. And more importantly than that, I'm going to compress the rim of the pot. And to compress the rim of the pot, I use my hand as if it was a letter A. I get my left hand, fingers, index and middle finger, around the wall of the pot. So can you see that? And if I was making a letter A, those would be the two legs of the A. So then, in or that's an, all these two fingers are doing is supporting the rim of the pot. Um, or not the rim, supporting the walls of the pot. But now I have to work on the rim. So I either bring in my finger, uh, my index finger, my right hand. Can you see how that makes the crossbar of the A? Okay. Uh, or I bring in my sponge, and you might use one one time and the other the another time. Can you see how much more organized that rim of that bowl of that pot did? Okay. So I always think of the rim of a pot as kind of like the spine in your body. So everything, every part of the pot is really suspended kind of from this rim. Just like all of the parts of my body that allow me to stand up and be functional are suspended from my spine. So that is a very, very important part of your pot. And each time that you um, are uh, throwing a pot and each time you have manipulated the pot, it's really important to go back and compress the rim to make it strong. And the other thing that that does is that it actually brings the rim back on center. So say that you had thrown your pot off somehow, like I just did by a careless move. If I go right to it right away and I compress the rim, see how it came back? So uh, you can throw a pot off. You'll be delighted to hear this. You can throw a pot <laughs> off at every stage of working with it. So that is your tool for, for making sure that you can fix it.